First on our list is the notorious Newcastle disease. Newcastle disease is a contagious viral disease of poultry characterized by digestive, respiratory, nervous, and reproductive symptoms. But it breaks down into three main clinical signs, which is the visceral, pneumotropic, and neurotropic signs. Today, we will focus on the pneumotropic signs, which is the respiratory clinical signs associated with Newcastle disease. So, when it comes to the neurotropic clinical signs, what you see is labored breathing, rills, and sneezing. Control of Newcastle disease is by vaccination using both live and inactivated vaccines. Basically, Lasota, third Newcastle vaccine, which is mostly referred to as Newcover, and then HB1. Moving on to a familiar form, infectious bronchitis. The characteristic respiratory signs in affected chicken are gasping, coughing, sneezing, chirping, and trachea reels, with a watery discharge from the eyes and the nostrils. Breathing noises are more noticeable at night while the birds rest. There is no specific treatment for infectious bronchitis, but sometimes vaccination can be effective if the vaccine contains the respective serotype of the virus in that given region. Infectious laryngotracheitis, a mouthful to say and a challenge to tackle. Chickens 14 weeks and older are more susceptible than young chicks. Coughing, sneezing, shaking of the head to dislodge exudate plug in the rainpipe are the main clinical signs associated with IELTS. Bears extend their head and neck to facilitate breathing, commonly referred to as pump handle respiration. Inhalation produces a wheezing and gargling sound. Blood tinged exudates and serum clots are expelled from the trachea of the affected bears. Many bears die from asphyxiation due to the blockage of the trachea when the trachea plug is freed. Transmission occurs by direct contact with infected bears or airborne. Avian rhinotracheitis is a lesser known culprit in the realm of poultry respiratory health. It mostly affects the upper respiratory tracts. Avian influenza is a global concern because AI viruses have a worldwide distribution. Infection can occur in many forms from asymptomatic to respiratory disease to systemic disease with a mortality rate of up to 100%. In poultry, there is mild to severe respiratory signs such as coughing, sneezing, reels, and also anorexia and diarrhea. The most frequent lesions in the respiratory tract are cataract fibrinos to purulent sinusitis, trichitis, bronchopneumonia, biosecurity, vaccination in some regions but is not allowed in Ghana are some of the ways that can be used to control avian influenza. Shifting gears to diphtheric fowlpox, a visually striking disease. In the wet form, there are canker-like lesions in the mouth, pharynx, larynx, and the trachea. The wet form may cause respiratory distress by obstructing the upper air passages. These lesions can cause discomfort and difficulty in breathing and swallowing. Treatment typically involves vaccination and medications. Prevention can be through good management practices and strict biosecurity measures. This is the general infection route for respiratory viruses. Virus enters the respiratory system of bears primarily through inhalation or ingestion of contaminated materials such as respiratory secretions, droppings, or contaminated feed and water. Once inside the respiratory tract, it targets the cells lining the trachea, bronchi, and the lungs. The virus then infects and damages the respiratory epithelial cells. This viral invasion causes cell destruction and leads to the sloughing off of damaged cells. In response to the viral infection, the host immune system initiates an inflammatory response that causes swelling and irritation of the respiratory passages. And to combat the virus and clear the airways, infected bears may produce excess mucus leading to nasal discharge and obstruction of the air passages. This inflammation, cell damage, and mucus production can result in coughing and sneezing in infected bears. The accumulation of mucus and cellular debris in the respiratory passages can lead to airway obstruction. This makes it difficult for the bears to breathe, causing respiratory distress. 
the damaged respiratory tissue may become more susceptible to secondary bacteria infection, which can exacerbate the respiratory symptoms and distress. Chronic respiratory disease, CRD, also known as avian plasmosis, is caused by Mycoplasma galicepticum, which rarely survives for more than two to three days outside the host, and therefore carrier bears are important for the persistence of infection on the farm. This is why it is chronic. Infection may spread by ducts, droplets, feathers, personnel, and is severest in the cold and dry months. Some bears may be asymptomatic, and signs are triggered by increased levels of ammonia and dust, the stress from onset of laying. The focus of this infection is the upper respiratory tracts and the air sacs. Typical clinical signs are nasal discharges, trachea reels, dyspnea, which is difficulty in breathing, sneezing, and cataract exudates in nasal discharges. It can be treated with antibiotics to reduce the severity of infection, but there is always the need to repeat treatment. Prevention and control includes maintaining a mycoplasma-free parent stock, applying straight biosecurity measures, antibiotic treatment, and then vaccination of bears. Infectious coryza, a name that sends shivers down the spine of poultry keepers. It is an acute respiratory disease of chicken caused by Haemophilus paragallinarum. The most prominent features of the disease are inflammation of the upper respiratory tract, a grayish mucoid nasal discharge, conjunctivitis, sinusitis, and fascia edema. Treatment is based on the administration of antibiotics and then vaccination of birds using inactivated HP vaccines containing two or three serotypes. Avian body telosis is a relatively silent threat. Fall cholera, a bacterial nemesis. Sudden and unexpected death could be the first sign of the disease. Signs are often present for only a few hours before death. If signs occur, there is anorexia, ruffle feathers, dyspnea, that is difficulty in breathing, and also trachea reels. There may be oral mucus discharges, and sometimes also from the nostrils. There is cyanosis of the comb and water, that is the comb and water turning a bit bluish. This can be controlled by good management practices, sanitation, and exclusion of wild bears and rodents from the farm. It can be treated with some antibiotics and using of commercial bacteria to vaccinate the bears. Avian onitobacteriosis, a less explored territory, but a respiratory challenge that causes havoc in the respiratory tracts of bears. Tuberculosis or E. coli infection principally attack the respiratory tract, that is the trachea, lungs, and air sacs, when the respiratory mucosa has already been damaged by an infectious agent, which creates an entrance door for E. coli infection, causing respiratory septicemia. Avian chlamydiosis, a stealthy invader with major effects on the respiratory tract of bears. General route for bacteria infection. The bacterium enters the respiratory system of bears primarily through inhalation of contaminated dust, water, or droplets, as well as through direct contact with infected bears or contaminated material. The bacterium attaches to and invades the respiratory epithelial cells, such as those lining the trachea and the air sacs. It causes infection and inflammation in these tissues. The bacteria infection triggers an inflammatory response from the host immune system, leading to swelling and irritation of the respiratory passages. As a result of the infection and inflammation, the respiratory mucosa can become damaged. This can lead to the production of inflammatory exudates and loss of ciliary function. The damaged respiratory tissue may produce excess mucus as a defense mechanism to clear airways, which can result in nasal discharges, throat congestion, and air circulitis. The inflammation, mucosa damage, and mucus production can cause respiratory symptoms in infected bears. 
including nasal discharges, often sneezing and difficulty in breathing. Inflammation and infection of the air sacs in birds can further exacerbate general respiratory distress. Fungal infection, an often underestimated threat. When the source of the disease is the hatchery, the disease is called brooder pneumonia. In older birds, the disease is called aspergillosis. The common clinical symptoms include somnolences, snoring, gasping, accelerated breathing, usually through the opening beak, dipsnia, and sometimes death within 24 to 48 hours. There is also air circulitis. All these can be prevented by avoiding moldy litter, disinfecting eggs before sending them to hatchery, adequate ventilation, regulating humidity. It can be treated by application of fungicide or antimycotic drugs such as nystatin and copper sulfates. One in two time dilution in drinking water may be useful. One thing we ought to note is that once mycotoxins are produced, they are heat resistant and therefore very difficult to get rid of. Syngamosis, a unique challenge also known as gape worms, are parasitic nematode worms that can cause respiratory disease in bears. Bears become infected with gape worms by ingesting larvae present in contaminated food, water, or from intermediate hosts such as earthworms or snails. Once ingested, the larvae migrate to the trachea and the bronchi. They attach themselves and feed on the blood and tissue of the host. As they grow, they can cause mechanical obstruction of the airway and trigger an inflammatory response from the bear's immune system. This inflammation leads to swelling, irritation, and production of excess mucus. The mechanical obstruction, inflammation, and increased mucus production can result in respiratory distress symptoms such as coughing, gasping, open big breathing, and sneezing. Bears may also exhibit a characteristic gaping or stretching of the beak as they struggle to breathe, which gives the parasite its name. Treatment typically involves deworming to eliminate the parasites, but prevention through good management practices, biosecurity measures is crucial to minimize the risks of gape worm infestation in your flock. Powdery feet and ducts are silent disruptors that have major effects on the respiratory system of bears. Avian ascites, a condition affecting more than just the respiratory system. Fluid accumulation in the abdomen puts pressure on the lungs of the bears, resulting in respiratory distress. Environmental factors like ammonia, smoke, Acute propane and butane intoxication from malfunctioning heating equipment can pose severe respiratory challenges in poultry for several reasons. Powdery feed, smoke, ammonia, and dust in the environment inhaled by poultry can irritate their respiratory tracts. The small particles can irritate the delicate mucous membranes in the respiratory system, including the nasal passages, the trachea, and the lungs. This irritation can lead to coughing, sneezing, and other respiratory symptoms. When these dusty particles are inhaled, it can result in obstruction of the airway. This can make breathing more difficult for poultry. The above mentioned can lead to reduced air quality within the animal housing facility. Poor air quality can further exacerbate the respiratory distress, particularly in animals with pre-existing respiratory conditions. Dusty environment can also create conditions that favors the growth of bacteria or other pathogens. Poultry exposed to dusty environments may be more susceptible to secondary respiratory infection, compounding the respiratory distress. Last but not least, the often underestimated factor, stress. It affects the respiratory health of bears by affecting their immune system, lowering their immune response and immune reaction, therefore making it easy for any respiratory viral, bacteria or any other factors to act on the bears' respiratory system with much ease. Treating respiratory diseases in poultry requires a comprehensive approach. You can begin by implementing vaccination protocols recommended by veterinarians. 
and adhere strictly to quarantine measures for new bears. Early detection of symptoms is vital, followed by a prompt isolation of sick bears to prevent further spread. Antibiotics prescribed by a veterinarian should be administered promptly and according to the dosage instruction. Rigorous biosecurity measures must be enforced to minimize the risks of disease transmission. Maintaining optimal air quality in poultry housing is essential. This includes proper ventilation, dust control, and cleanliness. Using uncontaminated heat and bedding material further reduces the risk of respiratory disease.